Archer, the hit FX comedy, has some pretty slick animation these days. Archer, stop thinking! Move! But when I think of Archer, when I think of the Archer style, I don't imagine moments like the above. I think more of stuff like this. What the hell is he doing? Hey, what'd I tell you, huh? Oh, um, uh huh? Hey, go buy a nicotine patch! Maybe that's partly nostalgia speaking, but I started watching the show back around 2016. New episodes then already looked like this. So why do I have a soft spot for what appears to be objectively worse animation? Well, that's what this video is about. Archer's good, bad animation. How it's changed over the years and what those changes might have led to. Because I'm not gonna deny it, compared to the really brilliant animation we've seen on the show in recent years, the first couple of seasons, comparatively, do look kind of, well, let's say janky. And maybe they were, but it kind of worked. Hear me out. Archer's often described as a spy show. That's how you'd pitch it to your friend if you were trying to get them to give it a watch, but that's only half of it. It's just as much a workplace comedy, in the vein of The Office, or indeed, the far more cynical UK office. A big part of the joke here is the juxtaposition between the daring capers and adventures typical of espionage thrillers and the utter mundanity back at the office running these capers, and how all these lines start to blur. Field agents taking office drama more seriously than missions, for instance, or the way corporate considerations and other inane miscellaneous topics bleed over into field work. You're my beneficiary! No! You're what? On my company life insurance! No! Oh my god! Against this background, then, a more stilted, more awkward presentation doesn't feel out of place. When Archer interrupts a shootout to bring up his insurance, or gums up a bomb defusal to argue over phonetics, that isn't smooth. That's a big middle finger to the suave composure with which spy stories tend to operate. It's only natural, really, that the visual style of the show juts out in a similar way. The at times awkward, off-balance animation fits the awkward off-balance humour and the awkward off-balance premise, spy fantasy weighed down by the mundane, the cynical. Well, that was the show's premise, because that changed after season 4. The show switched things up pretty dramatically, with season 5, Archer Vice seeing the gang pivot hard, from working at a spy agency to running a cartel. You're doing the exact thing you promised me you wouldn't! I was kidding. Season 6 was kinda business as usual, our characters became CIA contractors, but after that things only got more out there. Season 7 saw them become LA-based private investigators, and largely shifted to a more serialised storytelling. Seasons 8-10 to 10 took place inside Sterling's mind. With the real Archer in a coma, we followed his dream self through all manner of fantastic departures from the show's status quo. A dusky world of 40s noir pastiche, an Indiana Jones type story of pre-war adventure on a remote island, and my my personal favourite, Archer 1999, a retro sci-fi send-up. But parallel to this shift, another one was occurring. The show started looking smooth, really smooth. Action sequences in particular started to get longer and more elaborate. This isn't at all to say that there weren't big, explosive, spectacular sequences back in the show's early days. There absolutely were, but they weren't so common or so drawn out. And even within those earlier set pieces, I think there's a pretty clear difference visible when compared to the newer showstoppers. Intruders! Get him! And this is a shift which persisted even when the show returned to a more traditional status quo in seasons 11 and 12. So what happened? Well, the show was a success. Initially, there were just eight animators working on the show, in a house style described as limited animation. That's more or less the same principle you'd have seen on those old Hanna-Barbera style cartoons from way back when, some moving parts in the foreground on top of a static backdrop. And that never totally changed, limited animation is still broadly the approach taken by modern Archer, but these days there's a lot more bells and whistles. The Archer crew started using new, flashy animation tools, such as Toon Boom Harmony, for their action scenes, allowing a more traditional, less limited approach, and in the coma seasons, the use of 3D animation increased markedly. The result is immediately visible. It looks great. But there might be a cost to this new, glossier veneer. You'd be hard-pressed to find a fan whose favourite episode was one from, say, season 6 onward. The cultural impact of the show seems to have dipped after the first 
last few years too. When you see an archer reference somewhere, it's invariably phrasing, or just to the tip, or that's how you get ants, or danger zone. It never tends to be a bit from anywhere beyond the first handful of years, from beyond the point where the show started looking slick. And you might think I'm correlating two unrelated things here, animation quality and overall impact and reception, but I'm not convinced that's true. And that's because I think there's a shift visible in the ways that Archer episodes utilize their visuals, one tied to the improvement in animation. For one, it seems the writers began to increasingly write these spectacular action sequences into newer episodes. And again, there's always been action in Archer, but it hasn't always functioned in the same way. In the early days, these sequences often functioned primarily to set up gags, either visual ones or dialogue whose humor relied on the high stakes or peculiar circumstances of whichever disaster Archer and the gang had got into. Oh God, Jesus, quit bouncing my eyes! In these newer, cleaner sequences, the action serves a different purpose. Sometimes it does set up gags, sure, but a lot of the time it's there simply as action, to thrill, to be marveled at. The show's art director Chad Hurd noted in an interview a few years back that showrunner Adam Reed had begun actually writing some of these animative flourishes directly into the scripts. These sequences are to be enjoyed as eye candy in a way that they weren't before. And that has two effects. First, First, this greater focus on the visual necessarily means the non-visual, that is, the dialogue, the running, sarcastic commentary these characters gave compulsively, the barrage of witty quips, absurd non-sequiturs, and actually funny reference humour is de-emphasised, at least a little. And to a lot of people, that was the show's best part, the backbone of its identity. In the early years, the animation was never bad, per se, it was just clunkier and less cinematic, but the fact that the show couldn't rely on visual splendour to entertain the audience arguably meant that the writing, the performances, were forced to go above and beyond. And they did. Thinking about the newer seasons, though, maybe the fact that the world of the show, the way our characters interact with it, could now satisfy on a purely aesthetic level, took some of that pressure off the writers. That isn't necessarily good or bad, but it is something which might cause a show to start feeling different. Second, though, with regard to the wider spy genre, Archer at its best was always perched between loving homage and parody. Thrilling escapades for sure, but they weren't taken seriously. But polishing up the action, and devoting attention to these sequences in a way that isn't really undercut, the parody element falls away ever so slightly. We are meant to take this somewhat seriously. And again, that's fine, but it's different. Of course, there are plenty of other factors besides animation that contributed in their own ways to the gradual shift in identity Archer underwent, so it's really impossible to say whether animation specifically helped cause this shift, or if the animation changes merely coincided with this shift. But I don't think it's utterly unreasonable to speculate that there may be some correlation here. And I don't know how this video's sounded so far, but I don't even think that the metamorphosis Archer's undergone during its long time on the air is a bad thing. Archer's changed from a snarky, awkwardly subversive, sometimes black comedy, into a show just as interested in sincere storytelling and beautiful visuals. The culmination of this new direction is probably the season 12 episode Dingo Baby Etc. And this is still clearly Archer, but it's not an episode that would have been made 10 years ago. The story, the setting, and the way that setting is presented are all really enjoyable in their own right here, and would have made for a compelling episode of television even without the wit and zing traditionally at the heart of Archer. It doesn't matter that it's uncharacteristically sincere, or leans more heavily on the now gorgeous visuals compared to a cut from the early years, because it all works really well. It's just a shame that modern Archer's hit rate isn't higher. Episodes like Dingo Baby etc are the exception, not the rule. And increasingly since Adam Reed left, a lot of episodes do feel like kinda half-hearted attempts to retell stories like those seen in seasons 1-4, to only with less caustic wit, fewer gags that land, and way smoother animation. And again, it's possible that there isn't a correlation there. But if I'm being honest, I'd take this. Somebody do something! What are you Archer? doing, you idiot? Shut up, it's classic misdirection. Um, over this any day. Because maybe it was bad animation comparatively, but it was good bad animation. It fit the premise and vibe of the early years, and if a more rudimentary, more limited animation did mean more attention was paid to the dialogue, to the writing, then that's fine in my book. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I do really love this show, and I've wanted to make another Archer video for a while, so here it is. 
And ideally you've felt there's some validity to my viewpoint here. A lot of this is speculation on my end, so on the off chance that anyone from FX or FXX ends up seeing this and the reasons the show changed had absolutely nothing to do with the stuff I've been talking about, please don't hesitate to shoot me down. But I've always had a weird, mixed reaction to the sleek animation of Latter-day Archer, and in writing this video I feel I've clarified and expressed that feeling to the best of my abilities. But what do you think? Does Flash Flashier, smoother, more seamless animation make a show better? Or is imperfection more characterful? Do let me know below. Oh, and do leave a like if you want to see more. It's been nearly five months since I last talked Archer on this channel, but if this video does a little better, maybe it won't be so long until the next time. So I'll extend a big thanks to all my patrons on screen now, particularly Jonathan Francis Bond, Kevin Douglas, and Ian Fifield, and I'll see you all next time.